Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. This is Analytics in Action. It's the how-to webinar series by Association Analytics. This is our second session of the year. We're super excited to have you join us. We're gonna give it just a minute for everyone to get logged on. Did we have a fun question today? Any of you have a fun question for everyone to answer? Uh, just, uh, um, we could talk about Greg's wall for a minute. We got a few new oh, things yes. on the wall. Yes, Greg. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm blue. I'm sorry. I'm blue today. I, I can say that I, I don't normally look this color, but we got mm -hmm. a, a sort of uh, makeshift setup here. So apologize for that. Hope you can see and hear me okay today. So what's going on with the wall? We'll give you some updates. So shout out to our friends over at Blue Sky. It's a learning management system. My friend Brent over there sent this to me. Um, and shout out to our friends over at Web Scribble is job board. Um, thank you, Nicole, for sending over the great note and all the fun gifts. We have stickered up everybody's laptops and my wall with your fun stickers. Um, if you want to appear on my wall and get a special shout out, uh, just send me something in the mail. It's that easy. Uh, just drop it in the mail, put my name on it, and send it to our address. And I will put whatever reasonable thing you send on the wall. Reasonable. <laughs> I've gotten a few things already that are not wall appropriate. <laughs> Why um, reasonable? <laughs> it's got to be work appropriate. It's got to be uh, fun for everybody. We don't want any, anybody to be put down or, or any negative sentiment up there. We want to keep the wall as positive as we can. But um, I've got a couple of logos so far. We've got our friends over at New Jersey Society of CPA sent me theirs. Uh, we've got Mark Lowry's head on the wall, of course. Uh, we've got our friends over at Sales Loft on the wall. Um, we've got uh, ben Moscolino's head up there as well at AMS Geek, and I'm waiting for your logos. So I'd love to have all of you on my wall. Send me your logo. Send me something cool about your your organization, your trade show, uh, your membership, um, whatever you got. Send me something cool, and it'll go on the wall. All right. Awesome. Let's all right, we will go ahead and get started. You want to advance to the next slide? I'll introduce. Our session today is how to create quick wins with analytics. So uh, your host today, and if you're just now um, first joining us and you're not familiar with Greg and Bill, um, Bill Conforti is our SVP of strategy and solutions. He's worked in software and services for over 20 years, has over 10 years working with association and nonprofits. Greg Pollock is our VP of sales and he's worked in the association association space nearly 15 years. Very well-versed um, data geeks we have here to guide us through this session. And I will hand it over to one of them. I am assuming Greg. <laughs> data, it's data enthusiasts for us. So. Enthusiasts, okay. Not data geeks, come on. <laughs> I am certainly a data enthusiast and I'm a recent convert. To be honest, I wasn't a data enthusiast. Um, before I started here, I didn't understand data. I thought it was confusing. Um, and I've learned so much about it. It's so approachable. It's so valuable. And today we're going to talk about how you can get some quick wins with data. So we're going to follow our traditional format. If you've joined us before, um, we'll do some intros. We'll ask you some questions and get some feedback from you. Um, and as always, we'd love it if you drop questions or comments in the chat. Um, you can certainly use the Q&A, but we'd rather chat with you so everyone can see your question um, and we can talk about it if we want. We will walk through our top 10 list. We're sort of like David Letterman doing our countdown top 10 today. Um, we'll always summarize our key takeaways. We'll hang out for Q&A. Um, we've had some great Q&A sessions at the end that have gone pretty long, but we're always here to answer all your questions throughout the process. All right, and speaking of intros, uh, we didn't really ask today, but go ahead and introduce yourself in the chat, your name and where you're from, anything that's, uh, that's on your mind today. We've got a bunch of people on, so we'd love to hear from you guys. Let's get the, uh, get the chat rolling. So who is Association Analytics? I always like to bring this up because believe it or not, people join these all the time and say, I saw that webinar, but who are you guys again? Um, so we are a partner of associations. We help integrate your data and provide visualizations around that data to answer questions. Uh, we've been doing this with associations like yours for over 20 years now. Um, we're located in sunny, beautiful Arlington, Virginia. I'm coming to you from our main office right in Roslyn today. Um, and we provide a solution end to end, everything from integrations to data hosting, visualizations, um, strategy on how do I use all this cool stuff that I have, um, and support to make sure that you're getting the most out of your data. We do data cleanup, we do data governance, 
Um, if it has data in the name of it, there's a pretty good chance we do something with it at some point. Um, and we're friends of associations. I was talking with a friend of mine um, who works at an association. He said, I like you guys because you're association people who understand associations and you also understand data. And that's something that's important for him. So I thought that was really a good comment. Yeah, speaking of which, um, Andy, I saw, your, I saw your intro come in through the q and If you drop that in the chat for everybody, um, that'll be uh, that'll be great. So listen, everybody, uh, we got a poll question coming up. And so as I go to the next slide, what I want you to think about is um, some big project, right? Either a big project that's at work or even some big goal that you had in your personal life, something that's big and long-term takes a long time to do. And I want you to think about your approach to that, right? So our poll question is, what best describes your go-to method for successful completion of that big project or, or achievement of that goal, right? Um, are you gonna are you gonna power through it, right? Work just work on as hard and as fast as you can. Are you gonna delegate? You're gonna try to find recruit some people to help you. Just gonna take it one step at a time, right? Break it up and prioritize, right? Do the important things first, maybe. Um, right? Are you a planner, right? You're gonna measure twice and and cut once, right? And you wanna uh, like a big waterfall project? You gotta plan out every detail. You're gonna iterate, right? You're gonna do something like agile. Um, you know, uh, take a slice of it all the way through and then um, improve from there. We're going to outsource it, right? Maybe there's something else. If you uh, if you have another method, go ahead and tell us about it in the chat. Um, but uh, love to hear um, how some of us are approaching big projects like this. What about procrastinate until the last minute and then try and get it all done right before? Yeah, that's uh, tried and true. Tried and true. <laughs> all right, let's see. Let's see what we have. All right. Power through it. So, so we have 15% that are powering through it. Um, you know, that's uh, get, the, get your nose to the grindstone. We've got hard workers here. 6% of us are going to delegate. Um, the vast majority, so 70%, 68% are going to take it uh, one bite at a time, right? They're going to break it up into small pieces and they're going to prioritize. 6% of us are planners and 4% uh, and are going to iterate, right? They're going to borrow from Agile and do it that way. So um, no outsourcers here. Uh, you know, that's uh, maybe a little bit surprising. So Greg, I'm, I'm surprised that the iterate crowd is so small. What about you? I think it's because, and I'm going out on a limb here, the majority of our attendees aren't developers. They're not used to that development waterfall lifecycle sort of process. Maybe. Um, I think a lot of us are doing the big project ourselves, right? And we're busy with our day. So we're, we're, we're doing it on the margins. We're finding time where we can to get that big project accomplished. Um, and I, I think that's how a lot of us get the big rocks in. Yeah, it could have been that my um, choice of language was very poor and people didn't choose it because of that. So if that's the case, then uh, my apologies. But nevertheless, right, we have people that are, uh, uh, you know, whether it's one sort of narrow slice or whether it's like one one small chunk, we're breaking it up into pieces. We're doing what we feel like is most important first, because even if you iterate, right, they, there's the concept of the minimum viable product, right, the MVP. So you get something that's just good enough to get started. And then you incrementally improve on it from there, which is not that different, right? From taking a small chunk, right? Getting that big, that quick win, right? Which we're gonna talk a lot about today and then uh, and then going from there. Okay, so with that in mind, um, just, for, just for the chat here, right? I mean, we talked a lot about um, last time, if you're with us in the last webinar, we talked about those, uh, those New Year's resolutions that you made and they just sort of fell by the wayside already, right? We were only two weeks in and a lot of people had examples of resolutions that, uh, that already had, um, had been broken. So now I want you to think about those that, that you haven't broken and that you won't break. And uh, think about uh, what happened there, right? Did you have a quick win? What's your favorite quick win so far uh, of 2022? And my guess is that if there's any big long-term sort of resolution, um, you know, if it's one that you haven't already broken, there's probably a quick win that's giving you some momentum or some reason to stick with it already. <laughs> Craig made it up to four. Okay. A few notable campaigns. That's great. Um, yeah, see so that, I mean, that's a, getting some campaigns is a super example of a quick win, right? I mean, that's something that, uh, um, you know, I mean, all of us have marketing automation tools, right? And what's what's your stat, Craig? Like, I don't know, two percent or something, are 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 actually using those uh, those capabilities to their fullest, or even close to that. And so, yeah, campaign is great. Collaborations are increasing. Uh, that's awesome. So, anybody that was with us uh, two weeks ago, they they heard about my resolution to learn to play the guitar. You know, so I, I learned a couple of chords, 
And there's all these YouTube videos about how if you learn like two or three chords that you can play like a hundred songs. So I um, started playing around with uh, with some of those. So I'm, I'm on track to do our, our duet at the end of the year in our go-to webinar. So stick around for that. All right, um, so we've been talking a lot about analytics and I, I wanna just pause for a second and look at some, some definitions, right? So we have uh, three definitions here. Um, so A, right, it's the process for discovering, interpreting and communicating. And, and it's about patterns in data. That one's pretty good. Um, and the second one, it's a discipline for extracting insights, uh, including analysis, collection, organization and storage of data, as well as all the tools and techniques um, that are used to do that. And, and the third one, C, uh, statistical and mathematical uh, data analysis, so it's clusters, segments, scores, and predicts, and it's related to business outcomes. So uh, I'm going to give Greg first crack at it. Greg, which one do you like the best and why? You know, I, I've read over all of these a couple of times thinking about which one I like best. Um, and I think C is too serious for me. I don't necessarily need to have mathematical analysis and clusters and segments to be doing analytics, in my opinion, right? Um, I do like A because it's all about discovering and interpreting data, um, but I think B is my go-to here because it, it sort of breaks it down into the sections of my discipline. Right? So we're going to look at the data, we're going to analyze, we're going to collect it, we're going to organize it, we're going to store it, and then we're going to look at that data. Um, I think that's, that's for me, is where data analytics lives. Okay, um, cool. So I'm going to then ask, uh, ask the rest of us. Which one's best? Quick poll. All right, that's good. Let's take a look. I bet we get a lot of A's in here. Maybe we led the witness a little bit, right? So we have 32 that like uh, A, 60% um, uh, like B the best. And we got a couple of math geeks, 10% uh, or so that like C the best. And yeah, so I think I think all of those are, are legitimate. So just really quick, I mean, so um, so the first one is that's from Oracle and you know, just uh, to cite, you know, give credit where it's due. Um, I think the emphasis on patterns in this one is kind of important, right? So we don't necessarily need 100% accuracy in order to discover patterns and correlations and things. So that's one of the important differences between reporting and analytics. That's a whole other webinar, right? But your report should be accurate, right? You need those numbers to be correct. When it's, when it's analytics, it's some of the same numbers, but you know the, it's the purpose is different, right? So you just don't need um, that le level of accuracy necessarily, right? You do need to be able to trust the data, right? That it's mostly correct and then directionally you know, correct, of course. But you know, 100% accuracy, right? If you miss one member out of you know uh, 60,000, you know it's not going to kill you. Um, second one is uh, is my favorite, right? Uh, like Greg, this one's from CIO Magazine. And so this one emphasizes insights, right? Which I think is really important. And also the comprehensiveness of all of it. Right? So you've heard us talk a lot about um, how analytics is not just the, the charts and graphs, right? It's all that foundational stuff that you have to do in order to get there, right? It's the data wrangling, so it's the collection, right? You need that, that focus on data collection, organization, tools and techniques, et cetera. Um, but then, you know, also, um, you know, the third one is also interesting, not so much for the math part, the, the statistic and mathematical mod modeling, Cluster analysis is awesome, don't get me wrong, right? I mean, that is, uh, that's something that we should aspire to, right? That sort of unsupervised uh, data analysis across our, our member and operational data. Uh, but the, the thing I like most about this one is that the word business outcomes, right? Because, you know, it's not just about information. It's not just about insights. We wanna make decisions that are gonna, um, that are gonna um, improve our business. So all of them have certain things going for them. I think uh, all in all B is my favorite. And so I agree with the group uh, on that. So um, those those are really those are really good definitions. I've I've looked a lot, you know, for different definitions, and I think these are are three really good ones. So if there's a, um, you know, if you need that, you know, for some sort of justification or prioritization exercise, like we talked about last week, feel free to use this. Um, I want to give people a quick pass on some of this, though. So we're talking about analytic quick wins today, and I'm officially giving you a pass. If your quick win is a close cousin to analytics, we're calling that safe today, right? So some of these quick wins might be some of these pieces, they might be parts of them, they may not be the whole chunk, right? Is a really good report analytics. Maybe not according to the definition, but for today under quick wins, we're giving you a pass. We're yeah. saying the, some of these cousins of data analytics, the reporting, the visualization of, of data, the just talking about your data, we're gonna call all those quick wins today on the pathway to analytic success. Yeah, I mean, look, collection, organization, and storage, right? 
and plus the tools and techniques, right? So we, um, so I'm sorry, I forgot the name, um, the one who had uh, done the campaigns, right? I mean, yes, that's not technically analytics, but it's, it's doing something productive with our data, right? In regards to the organization and storage, right? Because but what keeps us, um, <laughs> what keeps us from doing, um, from making progress in, in analytics and, 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 from, and from executing on those campaigns is that we haven't organized our data correct, right? We haven't organized our campaigns, we haven't labeled them and all of that. So um, yeah, I, I, definitely, um, I definitely consider that a major uh, quick win. And, and, and not only is it a big win, but it's really quick. I mean, some of these, like some of these wins we're gonna talk about today, you might think, well, you know, Bill, that's not that quick. It's gonna take us six months. So I would just say, well, look, I mean, look at it in the grant, in the big picture, think about how long it took you to uh, implement your AMS and what wins, if any, that resulted in. And I think you'll agree that some of these are gonna be, uh, gonna be quick wins. Okay, so uh, a lot of today is gonna be talking about how to, like what the wins are gonna be. Like some of these wins are gonna be natural. Uh, they're gonna naturally follow from your commitment and. Uh, uh, and, and that you like kind of embark on this analytics journey, uh, but we have to create them as well, right? And so let's talk through some of the ways to uh, to create some quick wins. What do you think, Rick? All right, step one is to get started today, tomorrow, this week, this weekend, Monday morning. Um, getting started sooner rather than later. If you think six months is a long project, start two months from now. It's even longer to get that quick win, right? Um, don't go at it alone. Build a team of individuals who can help you with these quick wins. Don't pick the same person to be on the team. Pick, find skills that you don't have and go find that person. Get somebody from the executive team. Get somebody from the IT team. Get somebody from membership and marketing. Pick a diverse group of people, um, but don't put too many cooks in the kitchen, right? Two to three people, good team. Find people who disagree with you about stuff. If you just have a bunch of people who all agree and you're all on the same page, not gonna be a good team. Some of my best projects, um, came from inviting people that shared a different view from me. And it wasn't until we got our views um, sort of ironed out that we realized neither of us were right. The truth was somewhere in the middle. What if we don't have any staff so we can't create teams? Bill and I will be on your team. Email us and we're happy to participate on your team. Yeah. Um, you're not alone. Go on LinkedIn and find some colleagues out there who you've worked with in the past and bounce ideas off of them. Ask them to join you in a kickoff call and bounce some ideas off of them. Um, and you've got a team, they don't have to be spending hundreds of hours on this project to be a valuable member of your team. Make it make it fun, right? I mean, if you send out an email about uh, about data governance, you might not get any takers, right? Send the, send an email about happy hour, you'll get a lot of people to uh, uh, to answer that one. So let's uh, be creative, right? Recruiting yeah. these team members. We're gonna do some validation here, um, but we don't need to validate every piece of data to the nth degree. We need to get our data good enough to make to move forward and make a decision. So right size your validation process. In the, the goal of quick wins, we don't want to get bogged down and stuck with any get one given step. If one step is taking you significantly longer than you think, figure out what good enough looks like and move forward. Um, yeah, volunteers. Ask your, your members to volunteer, right? Um, hey, we're looking for to form a quick committee and we're looking for people who are excited about data. You want to join us for a couple calls? We'd love your input. Great idea. Um, go all in on the cultural aspect of this, right? Make sure that you're not just dipping your toe in this quick win, that when you do this, you're excited, you're proud of it, you're behind what you're doing and you're gonna promote this internally. We're gonna tell other people what we've done. Hey, look at what we did. That's gonna be a part of our quick wins here. Choose wisely, right? There's a lot of things you might want to accomplish, but we're not gonna get everything done as a quick win. So make sure your quick win is indeed quick um, and in a second, we'll talk about what a win or non-win might look like. Um, and then limit that scope. Be intentionally narrow with your goal, right? We got some campaigns up, good, right? We didn't try and boil the ocean on day one. <clears throat> we just wanted to solve this problem that's in front of us. We're not trying to schedule all the events all year long. We just got to get the first couple physical events going so we can figure out what we need to know and then move forward from there. <clears throat> As we were putting this together, we were talking about quick wins. And my question was like, well, what if we get a quick loss? Like, is that gonna turn my team off? And I think the answer is no. Even if you do the project and you get an answer to your question and it's not as exciting and as groundbreaking as you thought, guess what? You accomplished your goal. You built a team, you spent time looking at your data, you understood your data, you interpreted it, you learned more than you knew when you started 
And even if the outcome isn't what you expected, the process of doing that is getting you in the habit of being successful, right? The first time you go run to learn how to do a 5K, you're not gonna run all 5K, but that doesn't mean you give up and you never try again. It means you learned and you got better at it. And the next time you go do it, you're gonna have all those lessons learned, they're gonna be successful. So don't fear failure and don't think that we failed. I will say the one way to fail is to not do it, is to get halfway right. through the project and sort of bail out and go, this isn't worth it. We're not doing it. We're not gonna complete our project. As long as you choose your goal wisely, you build your core team and you move through the process, it's worth sticking it out all the way until the end. Yeah. Good point. All right. Um, so here's an interesting thing. Who can tell me what we're looking at here? Anybody recognize this? If somebody gets this, I'm gonna be blown away. Is that an impact tremor from a T-Rex? It's, uh, it's not COVID cases, I'll, I'll tell you that. A graph. It is, okay. it is a graph. What is it though? All right, I'm gonna, okay, knowledge process, okay. This is really, this is uh, something that was invented by a well-known consulting company that uh, teaches us about Jack's techno pretty close. technology markets. Okay, all right, so I bet uh, everyone's gonna recognize it now. I'm gonna label it here, so check this out. This is the Gartner hype cycle, okay? And this, this hype cycle is usually uh, what you see for technologies, right? So you might see one for, you know, 20, 2022, and it's going to have certain technologies that are really on the up, on the, um, on the calm, so to speak, right? They're, they're becoming more popular. It's going to be, it's going to have some that have kind of passed, like maybe like, you know, Internet of Things or something like that from, you know, several years ago is kind of uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe it's down here somewhere. And then other things that are, um, gaining more sort of widespread adoption, right? So it's made to show how products go from concept to maturity to widespread adoption, right? And not every product makes it all the way through, right? A lot of them, right, they, they get that initial visibility, but they peter out here. Many of them, um, you know, after that initial buzz wears off, there's this disillusionment or um, the, um, uh, the trough of disillusionment is what it's called, right? <laughs> and so we get stuck down there and um, uh, and then the product just dies, it, it, it never moves forward. And so um, the idea here is that a lot of this is very similar to what happens when you try to launch a new project uh, in your association, right? In particular, a technology project, right? So there's, um, there's this, this trigger, right? So there's a shiny object that you learn about, it gains visibility, you get everybody involved in those meetings. And then what happens, right? You know, the implementation maybe takes a little bit longer than you thought, people get disillusioned, they forget about it. And it's like, you can't recover from that, right? And so as people that care about analytics, the people that are on the on the core teams that are pushing for this, that are trying to, to go for that widespread adoption, um, I wanted to just kind of relate this to the idea of quick wins, right? So what happens is, you know, we sort of minimize, we manage expectations a little bit, minimize this, this big hump, but there are quick wins happen right in here. Right? And what the quick wins do is they maintain momentum. They get my interest, right? Why is it important to have a quick win? It's so mm -hmm. you don't quit. So you don't quit. That's why you know, if, you have an, uh, if you have a uh, resolution that you're gonna stick to throughout all of 2022, I bet you've had a quick win already or you would have lost interest in it and moved on to something else, right? So this is our job here, right? As advocates, as um, champions, right? For analytics is we need to find those quick wins and we need to minimize this this trough of disillusionment. I apologize. That's the most important label, and it somehow didn't make it onto uh, uh, onto my slide here, right? But then we have this slope of enlightenment, which I just think is awesome as a name, um, and that's where you're you know start about you know regaining some of the um, some of the focus, some of the emphasis back on the product features, and then the ones that make it to the plateau of productivity. Those are like all your brand name products that that your everyday products that you've heard of that make all the money and that that stand the test of time right so we want to get our um, analytics program here and we want to do that as quick as we can all right so with all of that we're going to move on to our top 10 analytics quick wins okay so as we do this right um you know like with uh like with letterman's top 10 right some are better than others right okay some of these are really good <laughs> You know, some you might say, well, come on, Bill, that's that's not really that quick, or it's not really such a big win. Okay, so um, love to hear comments about all of these. Um, if you have others that are related, or if you have one that's not on the list, I'd love to hear about it. Um, you know, I always 
it's been a while, right? But you remember listening to those top 10. Some of them you're like, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And some, yeah. um, so let's see. All right, so analytics top 10. So the first uh, number 10, um, the first uh, quick win is focus. Okay. Um, so what I mean by that is like uh, for years, I can, I'm sure everyone on this webinar, but just uh, associations in general, the ones that we talked to, for years, they've been talking about data quality. They've been talking about data governance. They've been talking about what a pain they can't get data out of their AMS. And these are problems that, you know, maybe they never reach that level of, of acute pain. That's just like, you have to do something tomorrow, but these are things that are not going away. And the quicker that you make the decision to focus on them, um, they're going to start to get better and have massive impacts down the road. So embarking on an analytics project naturally um, results in focus on these areas. And yes, the progress may be slow, but the renewed focus and the intentional focus on that is a major quick win that you get with analytics. Okay, let's go to uh, number nine. That's me, communication, right? Communication with people who don't know the insights that you know. They don't have access to the data you have. Share that data and the insights that it generates with others inside the organization, with components and chapter leaders, uh, with board members, with other staff, with the media in general, right? Create an infographic and share it out there with the world. Here's some insights we got from our data. Um, it might turn into a happier board member. It might turn into more successful chapters. It might turn into um, members who better understand the value proposition and, and all those other things you do that they may not personally touch. Focus on something concise. Don't try and give them all the data in the world and make them do work to interpret it. Give them easy wins, right? The massive 75 page PDF is not the quick win we're looking for. It's that one pager PDF. It's that infographic that explains membership and you post it on the website and people go, oh, I didn't know we had so many members of that type or I didn't know we had members over there, right? It's communicating what you know to other people so they know it as well. Okay, analytics quick win number eight. So this one is related to um, your strategic plans, right? So uh, very often we're wondering how do we get the things that we do as departments or even as individuals, how do we make sure that they are uh, moving us toward our um, strategic goals. And so this is alignment. So one of the things we hear about all the time is we don't know what to measure. Yeah, we, we know what KPI, KPIs are, but we don't really have any. Or we, yes, we have KPIs, but I don't really see how they're related to our goals, right? And we have the strategic plan, we have these KPIs, yeah, they're not really related. And so alignment, right? When you go through, when you start off in analytics, you know, one of the things you should strive to do is is achieve that alignment, right? Uh, be deliberate about your KPIs. Um, if if it's too much for you to think of it on your own, there's lots of associations that have done it already, right? Greg and I can be on your team in that regard, can uh, can help you out. Uh, but your know, org KPIs, your department KPIs, and the result is that everyone is going to be working, um, rowing in the right direction, so to speak, and uh, you know, they'll have a sense for where you are, you know, um, as you progress towards those goals. Okay, so that's number eight. Let's go to analytics quick win number seven. Hopefully we're all rowing in the same direction, but we all might not see the same view from our seat inside the boat. That was a good one. So grab a friend in the office. I almost got a spit take on that. That'd have been gold. Grab a friend in the office and show them software that they don't use and the reports and the analytics that that software offers. Hey, Bill, I bet you've never seen our Google analytics before. Can I show you around the insights we have on the website? Hey, I bet you've never logged into our community before. Can I show you some of the reports we get from here? I, I know you're the AMS master. Can you show me how you set up reports in the AMS? I want to better understand what sort of data we have and how we access it. Go find somebody in the office who you don't normally collaborate with them and show and tell. Brag about some of the cool stuff you're doing. Ask them questions about their software, and I guarantee you'll learn something, and hopefully they'll learn something. Just because you feel like you're a master of your system doesn't mean you are, right? Bill might ask yeah. you some really good questions as an outside perspective. Hey, how does this happen? I didn't know that was possible. And you're like, great, we should totally set that up. So collaborate with others. This is not a individual solo sport. This is a team sport, right? Building that team, grab somebody from your organization, show them some exciting things, ask them some questions. Yeah, and so I, I would be willing to bet that some of you listening to that were saying, well, Greg, that's, 
great, but I'm not going to do that. Okay, I have enough of my own work to do. I'm not going to go ask the next person to uh, show me the reports in their system. And again, one of the one of the natural consequences of an analytics program, I mean, a big part of it, right, is is centralized data and centralized visualization. So, you know, after a short while, you won't have to do that, right? Not that you don't want to collaborate with them, um, but you'll have a um, a natural tool in place, you know, to, to help you do that, right? So you don't have to like physically go and solicit them to do it, um, you know, but you can, um, you know, you have transparency, right? You have visibility into their data and you can ask them specific questions that pertain to, uh, to your team. Somebody right. on this call is going to do it and it's going to be fabulously successful, guaranteed. All right. Now, um, number six. Okay. So this one that so we're getting, we're getting to the good stuff now, right? We're, we're on uh, getting towards the bottom half of our list. This is number six, and this one is going to be really interesting for our uh, AMS um, gurus, right? Our, our, our DBAs, our analysts, right? Our, our subject matter experts of different sorts, right? And so what happens is there's something called the reporting bottleneck that happens, right? So there's a couple of people that know how to query, you know, the AMS to query NetForum to, to do those uh, IQA sorts of things. And, you know, they, but, you know, I mean, I, I can't run the I can't run the query, and not only that, but I'm not 100% sure about the right question to ask, right? So I have to ask Greg to do it, and then I get something back. If it's not what I I needed, I have to ask him again, right? And, and there's delays built into all of that. Not to mention, you know, that Greg's built up a bit of resentment over time towards me for my dumb questions, right? But um, with analytics, you will very quickly be moving towards self-service. Okay, um, so a big part of this is. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it's a shared Excel report, you know, to start out, um, or it's something, you know, more elaborate than that, that everyone, um, everyone accesses, a big part of this is no matter what it is, it has to be shared, it has to be visible for everyone, and it should be easy enough that it can be uh, self-service, right? So, at some, you know, for the advanced things, maybe I do go to an analyst, but I need to be able to answer basic questions on my own without, uh, without their assistance. Okay, number five. I love five. Five is all about giving your future self a nice present of time. <laughs> Optimize. Optimizing is all about saving time and effort down the road by spending a little bit of time today. If I can invest an hour or two today and I can save a half hour every week moving forward, that's a quick win in my book. So optimize. We see 50% time savings on report creation and consumption, and that'll be noticeable in your given week. Right? Find something that you do on a regular basis. I do this two to three times a month and figure out a better, faster way to do it. Don't just click on every button every time. How do I save this report? How do I, how do I create the columns that I want every time and I don't have to go back there? How do I make a formula that does this for me? How do I create like a template in Excel and I just drop this in and it gives me the answer? Find things that multiple departments do. Every department does this once a month. How can I optimize that, right? Invest a little bit of time now to get a lot of time savings down the road because you do the same thing over and over again. Um, and there's not a better way, but there's a smarter way to do it. And that's optimizing your process. Yep, and it's incremental too. So the very first thing you get, the very first, I mean, you're not gonna get 50% across the board, uh, you know, time savings, right? But uh, even that first thing is gonna already optimize. It's already gonna save you some time and effort for each individual, each of those quick wins, right? Every one of those things that you're able to tackle, eventually it becomes, you know, this big, uh, this big project, but every part of it um, has that incremental quick win that's, uh, that's associated with it. Uh, okay, so let's get to uh, number four. So, so look, so I guess we're, we're hitting home runs so far. I haven't had any comments. Nobody thinks any of these are dumb so far. Um, so I think the rest of the, these last four um, should really start to, uh, to resonate with you if, if the, the, the ones before have. Okay, so um, this one is staff engagement. Okay, uh, so no one likes, right? You, you hire that new analyst or maybe it's, it's some of you. So no one really likes, you know, compiling Excel reports, right? There, there's, I shouldn't say no one. There's a few people that like that, but they're probably not on this, uh, this webinar today, right? Um, so they want, instead of doing that, they want something cool that, that advances their careers. Maybe it makes them better at their job. Um, it, it makes them feel better about the place where, where they work, right? So they, they're feeling uh, more energized, uh, more engaged. And it starts with, discovery and it starts with validation, right? It starts with the, with that core team, right? So, so you start with that core team, you get others involved as you go through the process of, of collecting and validating data across um, across the organization. 
Um, you know, but you know, to the to the point earlier, we have to go all in on the uh, on the culture side of it, right? So you know, we have to redefine the kind of organization that we want to be. We want to we want to move towards being an organization that makes evidence based, you know, data informed decisions, and we want to be be proud of that, right? And um, and we have to promote all the things that we do that get us further towards that goal. And this is really going to pay off uh, with, with high levels of engagement, right? But you got you to keep people interested, right? So those quick wins, all these things we talked about are really, uh, are really important, right? So, so the quick wins, you know, build the engagement. But there is you know, just naturally by starting this, right? You know, those, the technology trigger, that gets you up the slope, right? So already this is going to happen naturally. The trick is, to maintain some of that, right? So you don't so you don't have that big trough after it. All right, analytics quick win number three. Everybody how to take, love this one. How to take so long? I mean, come on, we got all the way down to number three before we talked anything about money, right? We talked about time savings, and there's certainly revenue there, but we want to generate more revenue for our organization. Finding a few more attendees to go to the trade show, finding people who bought that product last year but haven't bought it this year. Right? Finding what your most successful product is and who bought it and who didn't buy it and getting those people to buy it. Building that automation campaign that's going to sell one more product than you sold last year. Right, Creating a process to generate revenue using your data. This is going to be huge because later when we brag about our wins to all the people on our team, we can say not only did we do this and it was really cool, it generated revenue. So look at your event data. Start identifying how we can invite more people and get them to come. Look at your renewals. How do we find those people who should be renewing but haven't? Look at your product sales, right? What are the courses in our LMS that I know Bill wants to buy? I just have to convince him to buy it. Let me pick up the phone and call Bill or email him and get him to purchase that course we have because I know people like Bill bought it. Find how analytics can drive revenue for your organization and brag about how successful it was. And if there was only more time and capacity, we could get more of that revenue. That's a quick win for me. Yeah, and this, and we're not necessarily talking about uh, you know millions of dollars here, or even tens of thousands of dollars, right? We're talking about something, something small, incremental. That uh, it's like a proof of concept, right? It proves that it works. We get the data in the right place. We make some decisions based on it. We generate some revenue, and this happens right away, right? This is not like um, this is not like years after implementation. This is like we get a few pieces of data together. We make some decisions, and and we're almost assuredly gonna see some uh, some upticks in certain things that we care about, right? Um, okay, number two, which brings me to, um, you know, what I think, I don't know, this one this one might even be number one for me, so we can uh, we can fight about that. But one of the things that, uh, that we've always talked about is making decisions with confidence, right? And I think, uh, I think it was Reggie Henry, so I think we quote, quote uh, Reggie Henry in almost every webinar, so we'll keep the streak alive. Um, it's, I'll paraphrase a bit, but it was, don't guess, no, right? That was, that was, you know, and I think Reggie was paraphrasing another quote, right? But the idea is that even if it's, uh, even if it's something that you think you know anecdotally, right, uh, an assumption that you've had for years, if you can validate it and you can prove it out in the data, you can make much more um, confident decisions based on that, right? Not to mention the assumptions you've had for years that you'll debunk, you know, by looking at the data and you'll be confident um, in, in doing that, where, you know, if you don't have data on your side, who's going to challenge a long-held assumption by the board or the or the senior leadership team, right? No one's going to do that. So, anyway, um, you know, Julie, our CEO, has you know, for years been saying, and maybe it's on our website even as as our official mission, but we want to change the way associations do business, right? And so, I, I feel like the the best way to do that is is by making business decisions faster and with uh, with more confidence, right? So, it's not about the the pretty charts and graphs are great, but this is uh, really, I think, fundamentally what we're what we're trying to do here. All right. Um, so with that, I'm going to go to the number one analytics quick win, and I'm going to give Greg the honor to introduce that. Look at that, go, fancy. That that was I love it. Go find and share new insights. There are things in your data waiting to be discovered that you can go find and share with people. Look at your business and find something that doesn't quite make sense. I don't understand why that's happening. That doesn't make any sense. Let me dig into the data and figure out exactly what's going on, identify that aha moment, and then share it with other people. I've had tons of these new insights that have really changed the way I've done business over my career. And I wanted to share just one or two quick examples with you 
um, in a previous career, I was doing mobile apps for trade shows. And we were working with this really big trade show. We spent a lot of time building this mobile app. It was good stuff. Um, and I looked at the utilization reports and they were down. Like nobody was downloading this app and I just didn't understand what was going on. And I was like, the app's good. I went to the app store and I tested it. I asked my friends to test it. Everybody could get the app. Life was good. And I was like, I don't understand why people aren't using this app. So I started to dive in and I started to really explore and I asked a lot of questions and it was something really simple. I found out that nobody was promoting the mobile app. Like they were busy promoting their trade show and registrations. No one had created a campaign to say, hey, we have a mobile app. No one put a picture on their website of a phone and said, click here to download it. It was something really simple that was a new insight for their team. They're like, oh, we if we want people to use it, we have to promote it. And then I realized that if I wanted people to use it, I had to promote it. So I started to do my own promotions for them. Hey, here's an email you can just send to your people. Hey, give me a list of people and I'll send the email. And guess what happened? The numbers skyrocketed. We were able to get back on track before it was too late with that event and get people to download the mobile app. Tons of people were using it at the end of the day. Um, this is a great example of that insight was obvious when we knew it, but it was unobvious before we knew it, right? Before we knew that we should be promoting our mobile app, it was someone else's job. I didn't realize it was falling through the cracks. I didn't see in the data that it wasn't being successful. No one brought it up to me. So when I called them and said, hey, no one's promoting the mobile app, it was a new insight for them. They didn't know that. Someone had to tell them that was happening before they were going to take action. So there are tons of examples of insights that you can easily get to. And when you share it with that person on the other side, they're like, well, obvious. It's like, well, it wasn't obvious yesterday before I brought it up. That's why I brought it up. That's the new insight. Go find those new insights that just things that don't make sense to you, go figure out why. And how do we get these new insights? We're going to go through all these things we did already, right? We're going to focus on one specific thing that we're looking for. We're going to talk to other people about it and ask questions. We're going to align it with our goals. We're going to collaborate with other teams, right? We're going to make it easy for ourselves to get that data. We're going to have confidence in the thing we're doing, and we're going to promote it and tell everybody, hey, we found out this new insight. Everybody else needs to know this as well. We got to get behind this so we can address it. We can fix it. We can get back on track. Um, easy win right there for you, finding new insights. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, so look, so th there's a reason why this is, uh, this is number one, right? Th this is probably uh, one of the quickest and one of the most impactful, right? But those are really the two big things, right? When you choose that win that you're going to go for, right? If it's a quick win, it's got to be it's got to be relatively quick and it's got to be impactful. Right. And and not only, um, you know, I mean, when, when you choose impact, it doesn't mean that it has to be earth shattering right for the association, but it means that it has to be noticeable and important for a particular group. And, it, and if that group is the entire association, that's awesome. If it's a, a particular department or a particular um, member of the leadership team, right, whose attention you can get with something like that. That's also uh, one way to judge, right? Where where you should go with that quick wins. But you know, uh, I can uh, I can guarantee, right? That if you if you take this approach, with, even if it's a small amount of data, you know, and if you take a a new approach to looking at it analytically rather than just reports the way you've always done, um, there are insights there um, that you can find, and you do not have to be a, a data scientist in order to uh, uh, in order to do that. All right, um, cool. So with that. Uh, we're gonna um, surprisingly few questions. Uh, you guys uh, still out there? Any any questions or, or comments? What do you think about our top ten? I'm surprised uh, no one has criticized it yet. No. Okay. They're all on board. Uh, and don't don't, board. don't don't run away yet. We've got a we've got a question. We need your help in a, in a minute here. We're gonna ask. <laughs> all right, Matt gives us the thumbs up. All right, cool. All right, so look, let's uh, let's go to some uh, some very uh, short and uh, sweet key takeaways. Start small start now, right? Don't procrastinate and put this off another week and another week, and another week. Pick your mission, pick your goal, get, build your team, get started. Um, don't try and boil the ocean here. Um, pick a small intentionally narrow scope um, and, and accomplish those goals and then get bigger and then get bigger. Um, brag and promote what you're doing. Tell people that you're doing it and try and build consensus and get more people to join promote the answers that you've been finding, talk all about that sort of stuff. Promote it, tell everybody your successes. We're not unfortunately yeah. gonna show examples of data analysis today. Um, we try and go back and forth between 
some thought leadership content and actually showing software. Um, today, we're not showing any software analytics, um, but hang out with us and we will certainly do more of those in the coming weeks. Yeah, and also I was, I was just gonna mention, um, so Carolyn, if you, um, yeah, Katrina, would you mind to, to post the, uh, the, the link to our resource page? Uh, so so this is a this is a series you know, we have there's lots of webinars that, that everyone has access to and in the vast majority of them we do show uh, software we do show examples of uh, of data analysis you know today we didn't uh, didn't do that it's more procedural in nature like how do we kind of like starting off the year we talked about prioritization uh last time so this is about like you got uh you, you got the product uh, the project you know sort of approved maybe you got some funding it's like how do you how do you get it off on the right foot, right? How do you make sure that it doesn't uh, it doesn't fail before it, it really gets started, right? And and we felt like um, emphasizing, right, some of the quick wins you can expect and how to um, how to create them, how to get them, will be uh, would be a good topic for us. So um, tons of uh, tons of analysis uh, coming your way in uh, in future and in, in past webinars. So encourage you to uh, to check those out. All right, good so. Call. I want to I want to make my ask real quick, and then I want to answer Nicole's question. So hang out for one second, Nicole. We're going to get there for you. My quick ask is, um, the whole series is called Analytics and Action, and I want to show more action. Today we talked about quick wins, and I want you to share with the team your quick wins. So what I'm asking is, if you'd like to do a show and tell, we'd like to have you. What I think would be really fun is to get five or six people who want to talk for two or three minutes and show something exciting they've done um, to everybody and say, hey, here's a quick win I got. Here's an analytics project I did. It can be in Excel. It can be a report in your system. It can be a PDF. It can be an infographic. It can be in Power BI or Tableau. It can be in our software. It can be in someone else's software. I don't care. What I'd love is some, some show and tell. Here's what I did. Here's the outcome of that. Um, go. Uh, I think this will be really fun if you all can start joining and sharing your things. So we'd love to have you join us. If you're a little shy and you don't want to appear on camera and share yourself, that's fine. Send us your cool thing and we'll be happy to showcase it for you and make it look awesome. So we're looking for people to join us. If you have examples, please email us at that email address there and say, I'd love to show something really cool on a webinar. We don't have a date yet. We're trying to find if we can get enough people to do it, but I think it would be really fun to highlight uh, something you've done. If you want to you know, video in and, and do it from your office, you can. If you want to send us a pre-recorded clip, that's fine. If you want to send us a screenshot, that's fine too. We'd love to see what your analytics and action looks like so we can share that with everybody else on the call. Okay. Bill, can we share specific examples of goals? Yeah, so uh, so if I if I understand your correct uh, question correctly, Nicole, I mean, so, so you're thinking of like one specific type of insight that we might uh, that we might go after right as a uh, as a quick win so usually you know for most of us we're we're member-based organizations um, you know whether those be individuals uh, or trades so very commonly um, a, a first quick win is to have a solid understanding of membership numbers over time right so or even current membership numbers right that's not always a given right for every association so um, think about something small like um, current uh the number of active members as it changes over time like going back a couple of years is that data that uh, that you can get um, if you can get that data um, can you start to slice and dice that um, by different dimensions like starting with member type is the first one we start with if you have member type and you can slice and dice by member type over time then maybe you look at something else that you want to uh, affect like maybe you look at age maybe young professionals or, or students or something like that is really important, right? Then maybe, maybe you bucket it or stride it out by age, right? Um, if you get an analytics platform, you're gonna be able to kind of do all of this at once, right? Uh, uh, through implementation, but if you're doing it manually, maybe you take one at a time. Maybe you try to, to stride that by age. Uh, maybe you care about career level or job function or other dimensions um, that you have in the data and um, you know, take some different slices of that and see what kind of insights uh, you can uh, you can find. So, I, I would probably um, I would probably start there if if that seems like you know um, like you're not not ready for that. Maybe just look at um, like completeness. All right, like uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of uh, prospects that have goals around like you know diversity is a, is a very common one now, but there there are others um, in the 
uh, in the recent past, and, and they, they want to affect some change. They want to track progress, you know, but they, they don't have uh, good ways for collection, right? So remember, you know, analytics is not just the math, right? It's not that predictive model necessarily. It's the tools and it's the techniques and it's the data collection and all of that. Um, so those, those can also be uh, wins themselves, right? So maybe, maybe you um, suggest a brand new way to collect data that you haven't been able to successfully collect before, right? Maybe it's a, you know, uh, it's a survey or a micro survey, or maybe you want to launch something through the mobile app, right? Or you want to, you want to add on a section to your event, uh, event application or something, right? That's, that's a new way to collect data that you can use to, to answer some specific business question. So it's not, uh, it's not necessarily, um, you know, something complex, you know, mathematically, right? Um, another thing could be, um, you know, predictive models are common, right? We want to predict, are people going to buy stuff? Are they going to donate? Are they going to come to our conference? And you can, you can start down that path, right? I mean, those are some things that don't require necessarily, you know, a, a full-blown analytic system, but it does require obviously some, some, you know, some mathematical and statistical ability to do that. Um, but that would be, if you have the right sort of staff and the right capabilities, that's also a quick win because, you know, what you're really showing is, hey, look, look what we can do at scale, right? We can automate this. And, you know, this took me a lot of time and effort to do, but if we get the right tools in place, we'll be able to predict these kind of things at scale across all sorts of different variables. So um, I don't know if that, I hope that answers your question. If not, if you, uh, if you want to clarify, happy to, uh, to hang out and discuss a bit more. Let me plus one that for you, Bill. So I think a lot of organizations, specifically associations already have goals and analytics can align to the goals you already have. If you think about it, how would I measure that? How would I go about changing that? And then how would I measure the change? Um, so if I had to just guess off the top of my head that I was maybe a school counseling association in the great state of Wisconsin, and I <laughs> wanted to, just making this up off the cuff of my sleeve here, I wanted to understand trends in school counselors over time um, and their understanding of certain things. I might do a survey. I might ask them, hey, members, what are your knowledge on these things? Tell me what you think about this stuff. I'd then put together a campaign to educate them and I'd monitor that campaign. And then at the end of it, I'd survey them and see, was I able to create more knowledgeable uh, people, right? By doing this campaign, did we increase their knowledge on these things we could measure? And then do that again. Hey, now we've got a baseline. We can do a yearly benchmarking report. We can figure out where people stand on these things. Start measuring that and measuring the change over time. So go back to your strategic plan, read your goals that you have, and then identify how can you put metrics to those goals. Now, when we get really good at this, we actually change the way we write our goals. And we write our goals intentionally measurable. So we did a webinar last year about how to create a better strategic plan knowing that analytics is in the mix. So what I then want to do is I want to say, well, if we're going to create goals, what are the things I can measure easily? And how do those things change? And how would that align with what I want? So you know, instead of saying we want to better engage our members, you might say something like, we want to better engage our student members by getting them to come to our annual conference and enrolling in a mentoring program, because that's going to convert them to professional members at a higher rate and thus will retain those people. That is an on-fire strategic plan because it communicates exactly what you're trying to do. It tells me the metrics and the, the things I'm trying to measure along the way that'll lead me to success. And it also tells me why I'm trying to do those things, right? Yeah. We don't just want to engage student members. We want them to convert to professional members and we want to retain them. That's why we're doing this. So later when we think about, you know, what are our goals, we can flip the script and we can say, well, how do we create goals that are measurable, that are achievable, and that still get to the core end of our mission, but we're thinking about articulating those goals in an analytical method. And, and that was, a, I mean, I believe him if, if he said he came up that off the top of his uh, head or cuff of his sleeve or whatever he said. But look, I mean, that was a really good example for another reason, which is there was like at least two, if not three different departments that would be involved in, um, uh, in moving towards a goal like that. So in each one of them has their own data. They have their own measures of progress and they require visibility. They require collaboration, right? They require, um, it's going to naturally lead to some of those quick wins that we were uh, that we were talking about earlier, right? That visibility, um, that uh, uh, that collaboration, that communication, all those things. So, um, great example, all right? Any uh, Brian here asked a really tough question, and I don't know if we want to tag our resident 
expert on Katrina, if she wants to jump in and provide some insight here, you're asking a really tough question here. Um, top of the funnel campaign. So the idea here is we do a lot of things to get people aware of us, to get them to buy from us, to get them to engage with us. How do I identify which thing moved the needle? Um, and we've talked a lot about this in some of our series. Um, it may be impossible to figure out which last thing caused you to take that action. So if I email you and I promote on social media and I attend physical trade shows and then you sign up for my webinar, why did you do that? Was it the last thing or was it the series of things you engaged with? Right. So there's possible to do this through something called UTM codes, which you can, every time you send an email, you can create. But I would say it's easier to do this through engagement scoring understanding that one thing might not get someone to, to enter your funnel. It might be multiple things to do that. And you might want to do something called engagement scoring, where we say, if you're a non-member and you do five or six of these things, that's probably a really good sign that you're going to move forward with us. And we can measure, are you doing all five or six of those things? But it becomes very challenging to know, why did you register for this conference? Is it because that last email you got or is that last email you got just the thing you clicked on? Like, that's a really tough one to answer. Yeah, yeah, so multi, yeah, attribution, right? So uh, um, Association Elixir, that's uh, um, Katrina from our uh, from our marketing team. So so yeah, so what Brian's asking about is, is the problem of attribution, right? So it's, there, there's a lot of different uh, formulas for that. But what I can say is um, even if, um, you know, if, if we get to a conversion, and, and there's been multiple touch points. First of all, good for you. Um, second of all, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a good problem to have. And you know, the exact, um, the exact a attribution is, is a tough thing to nail down. However, um, I do think that there's a lot of good data available on the incremental conversions, right? So, um, so the, uh, think about those top of funnel and then you have several layers between. You know, if you have a tool like, uh, like HubSpot or, um, or, or some, you know, or, or some marketing automation, or you can track this through through Google Analytics in a way, um, in ways as well. Which is set up our uh, set up our goals, monitor those conversions, and then we can relate that back to the um, to the to the source, right? The source of those um, those conversions. So it's uh, um, that, that that that's tough, right? That that's way down the road. I mean, that's like uh, you know, we're talking about how to get started. I mean, that's that's kind of an advanced question, but. It's great to be thinking about that uh, from the beginning because everything you do now is is uh, taking you towards that. Right. I think the multi-touch attribution, in my opinion, is better than the last touch attribution, right? Realizing that people don't just do things from one email most of the time. It takes a series of emails and campaigns to get them there. I think I think last touch is the most common default attribution model. Um, so again, if that's something that you're into, I would encourage you to look into um, how your particular tool uh, uh, does that, but great question. Janet, my, my thought process now around that is exactly where you are. Um, I, I heard this statement and it, it really stuck with me is, you know, when is the best time to plant a tree? It's 20 years ago, but the next best time to plant a tree is today. Um, and I feel like we can't go back in time and start our analytics quick wins, right? 20 years ago, but we can start them today. And I'm a procrastinator because the scope is too big. I can't understand all of it. But if you can break it up into bite-sized chunks and give me easy wins and get me excited about it, I'm all on board all day long to get started today. All right. I feel like we should have a slide for that at the end of all of our presentations. It uh, very often comes back to that uh, sentiment. So that's a, uh, um, that's a good place to, to wrap up. Um, so we have um, uh, the next installment in our series coming up in a couple of weeks. So look out for, um, you know, for emails about that. We're going to be talking about um, doing more with less essentially right so that's again con continues our um you know early year emphasis on prioritization and um and business planning right getting things uh getting things started um so uh, doing more with less is um, a really good segue into some of the um you know more more tangible analytic stuff that we'll be getting to uh very shortly so thanks uh, thanks for hanging out with us this was uh, this was fun we spent a planned for about 40 minutes, spent a whole hour on it. So it was uh, really good spending time with you and hopefully we'll, we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody. If you want to be a part of our show, email us and you're, we'd love to have you do a show and tell with us. And if not, we'll start calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye everybody. Thanks for joining us.